Now, Matthew chapter 12, verse 43. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house. You hear that? The unclean spirit says, I will return into my house. That's how he sees you. He sees you as a house. You got that? Now, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he finds it empty, swept, and garnished. Now, let's just park here for just a minute. Notice what he says. The unclean spirit goes out of a man. He walks in through dry places seeking rest. So what does that tell you? There's no rest for the wicked. Unclean spirit. He doesn't find rest, right? And he finds none. Then he says, I will return into my house, that's you, from whence I came out. Now, notice this. See right here. People say, well, a Christian can't have a demon because a Christian has the spirit of God. Okay. First off. Notice what's being said. He said, I'm going back to my house from whence I came out. Now, the Bible says that whenever, that, well, it says that the body without the spirit is dead. So if the spirit that is cast out was part of your spirit, then when the spirit left, your body would have died. Does that make sense? Because that spirit, if that spirit was in your spirit, but the problem is, see, the spirit, this, this unclean spirit, is not in your spirit. He's in your house, which is the body. Okay? Now, understand that. Now, the, a demon, now understand, he primarily operates, he comes into the body, but he primarily operates through the soul. Why? Because he wants control of your mind so that he can do what he wants to do. Because he doesn't want to live in you if you won't do what he likes to do. Now, what Dr. Summerall used to teach us that there's two ways to deal with the devil. One is you cast him out, and you can cast him out of somebody else, or you can cast him out of yourself. I actually did that early on. I went through a, almost a 30-day period where I exercised, exorcised, not exercised, okay, exorcised myself of 22 spirits. Specifically, and I knew when each one, but it took 30 days to do it. And I went after each thing and until I was free. Now, in that, the, the spirit tries to get control. Now, the other way that another way to deal with the spirit, other than casting it out, is to starve it out. Starving it out usually takes longer, not usually, always takes longer than casting it out. But sometimes, if you're not strong enough spiritually, starving it out is its second best option, but it's, it's an option that works. I'm not suggesting it, but I'm saying if you need it, then at least that. You say, how do you starve it out? You simply, by strength of will, refuse to do what the demon wants you to do. It's just that simple. Now, Understand, a demon has control over your will to the degree you give him control. And until you are fully possessed, at well, there are roughly seven levels of uh, demon possession. Between the fourth and fifth level, you can still set yourself free. So you can still exercise your will and still... Now, and Dr. Summerall even gave us examples. There was a witch doctor who was so demon-possessed that he could do some pretty incredible things, right? Uh, he, would go, he would lie down on the ground, go into a trance, and then literally his body would become stiff as a board and rise two or three feet off the ground. He was that possessed. And yet, when Dr. Summerall asked him, well, did you have to obey the demon? He said, no, I didn't have to. I could have disobeyed him anytime I wanted to, even at that level of possession. But now notice he said, then why didn't you? He said, because the demon would make it so uncomfortable for me, I didn't want to resist. And see, that's why it becomes very uncomfortable once you get up in those levels. Now, 